Book Three of the Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Rune and Rising. Chapter Two. The kettle's massive door slammed shut and I heard the lock turn. I tried to put aside the sick twist in my gut and make sense of what I was seeing. Nadia and Zoya, two squalors, Mal and David, a harmless fabricator. Today, the note had said, what had it meant? I'll ask you again, priest. What is this? Why are my friends in custody? Why are they bleeding? These are not your friends. A plot has been discovered to bring the White Cathedral down around our very ears. What are you talking about? You saw the boy's insolence today. Is that the problem? He doesn't tremble properly in your presence? The issue here is treason. He drew a small canvas pouch from his robes and held it out, letting it dangle from his fingers. I frowned. I'd seen pouches like that in the fabricator workshops. They were used for blasting powders, the apparat said, made by this fabricator filth with materials gathered by your supposed friends. So David made blasting powders. There could be a hundred reasons for that. Weapons are forbidden within the White Cathedral. I arched a brow at the rifles currently pointed at Mal and my Grisha. And what are those? Ladles? If you're going to make accusations. Their plans were overheard. Stand forward to Mark your batar. Speak the truth you've discovered. Tamar bowed deeply. The Grisha and the Tracker plan to drug you and take you to the surface. I want to return to the surface. The blasting powders would have been used to ensure that no one followed, she continued, to bring down the caverns on the Operat and your flock. Hundreds of innocent people? Ma would never do that. None of them would. Not even Zoya, that wretch. And it doesn't make any sense. Just how are they supposed to drug me? Tamar nodded to Jinya and the tea that sat beside us. I drink that tea myself, Jinya snapped. It isn't laced with anything. She is an accomplished poisoner and liar, Tamar replied coldly. She has betrayed you to the Darkling before. Jinya's fingers clenched around her shawl. We both knew there was truth in the charge. I felt an unwelcome prickle of suspicion. You trust her, Tamar said. There was something strange in her voice. She sounded less like she was issuing an accusation than a command. They were only waiting to stockpile enough blasting powder, said the operat. Then they intended to strike to take you above ground and give you up to the Darkling. I shook my head. You really expect me to believe that Mal would hand me over to the Darkling? He was a dupe, said Toya quietly. He was so desperate to free you that he became their pawn. I glanced at Mal. I couldn't read his expression. The first real sliver of doubt entered me. I'd never trusted Zoya, and how well did I really know Nadia? Jenya. Jenya had suffered so much at the Darkling's hand, but their ties ran deep. Cold sweat broke out of my neck, and I felt panic pull at me, fraying my thoughts. Plots within plots, hissed the operat. You have a soft heart, and it has betrayed you. No, I said. None of this makes sense. They are spies and deceivers. I pressed my fingers to my temples. Where are my other Grisha? They have been contained until they can be properly questioned. Tell me they are unharmed. See this concern for those who would wrong her? He asked of the priest guards. He's enjoying this, I realized. He's been waiting for it. This is what marks her kindness, her generosity. His gaze locked on mine. There are some injuries, but the traitors will have the best of care. You need only say the word. The warning was clear, and finally I understood. Whether the Grisha plot was real or some subterfuge invented by the priest, this was the moment he had been hoping for, the chance to make my isolation complete. No more visits to the kettle with Jinya, no more stolen conversation with David. The priest would use this chance to separate me from anyone whose loyalties were tied more tightly to me than his cause, and I was too weak to stop him. But was Tamar telling the truth? Were these allies really enemies? Nadia hung her head. Zoya kept her chin lifted, her blue eyes bright with challenge. It was easy to believe that either or both of them might turn against me, might seek the Darkling out and offer me as a gift with some hope of clemency. And David had helped place the collar around my neck. Could Mal have been tricked into helping them betray me? He didn't look frightened or concerned. He looked the way he had at Karim's in when he was about to do something that got us both in trouble. His face was bruised, but I noticed he was standing straighter. And then he glanced up, almost as if he were casting his eyes heavenward, as if he were praying. I knew better. Mal had never been the religious sort. He was looking at the master flu. Plots within plots. David's nervousness. Tamar's words. You trust her. Release them, I commanded. The uproar shook his head, his expression full of sorrow. Our saint is being weakened by those who would claim to love her. See how frail she is. How sickly. This is the corruption of their influence. A few of the priest guards nodded, and I saw that strange, fanatical light in their eyes. She is a saint, but also a young girl governed by emotion. She does not understand the forces at work here. I understand that you have lost your way, priest. 
The opera gave me that pitying, indulgent smile. You are ill, Sancta Alina, not in your right mind. You do not know friend from foe. Goes with the territory, I thought bleakly. I took a deep breath. This was the moment to choose. I had to believe in someone, and it wasn't the operat, a man who had betrayed his king, then betrayed the darkling, who I knew would gladly orchestrate my martyrdom if it served his purpose. You will release them, I repeated. I will not warn you again. A smirk flickered over his lips. Behind the pity, there was arrogance. He was perfectly aware of how weak I was. I had to hope the others knew what they were doing. You will be escorted to your chamber so that you may spend the day in solitude, he said. You will think on what has happened, and good sense will return. Tonight we will pray together, for guidance. Why did I suspect that guidance meant the location of the firebird and possibly any information I had on Nikolai Lansoff? And if I refuse, I asked, scanning the priest guards, will your soldiers take up arms against their saint? You will remain untouched and protected, Sancta Alina, said the operat. I cannot extend the same courtesy to those you would call friends. More threats. I looked into the guards' faces, their fervent eyes. They would murder Mal, kill Genya, lock me in my chambers, and feel righteous in the act. I took a small step back. I knew the operat would read it as a sign of weakness. Do you know why I come here, priest? He gave a dismissive wave, his impatience showing through. He gave a dismissive wave, his impatience showing through. It reminds you of home. My eyes met Mal's briefly. You should know by now, I said. An orphan has no home. I twitched my fingers in my sleeves. Shadow surged up the kettle walls. It wasn't much of a distraction, but it was enough. The priest guards startled, rifles swinging wildly, as their Grisha captives recoiled in shock. Mal didn't hesitate. Now, he shouted. He shot forward, snatching the blasting powder from the Oprod's hand. Toya threw out his fists. Two of the priest guards crumpled, clutching their chests. Nadia and Zoya held up their hands, and Tamar spun, her axes slicing through their bonds. Both squalors raised their arms, and wind rushed through the room, lifting the sawdust on the floor. Seize them, yelled the Oprod. The guard sprang into action. Mal hurled the pouch of powder into the air. Nadia and Zoya lobbed it higher, up into the master flue. Mal slammed into one of the guards. The broken ribs must have been an act, because there was nothing tentative in his movements now. A fist, a thrown elbow. The priest guard went down. Mal grabbed his pistol and aimed high, up into the flue, into the darkness. This was the plan? No one could make that shot. Another guard threw himself at Mal. Mal pivoted from his grasp and fired. For a moment, there was a hush. Suspended silence, and then high above us, I heard it. A dampened boom. A roaring sound rushed toward us. A cloud of soot and rubble billowed from the flue above. Nadia, cried Zoya, who was grappling with a guard. Nadia arced her arms, and the cloud hovered, twisted, siphoned into the shape of a whirling column. It spun away and collapsed to the floor in a harmless clatter of pebbles and dirt. I took all of this in dimly. The fighting, the opera shouts of rage, the grease fire that had broken out against the far wall. Jenny and I had come to the kitchens for one reason alone, the hearth. Not for the heat or for any sense of comfort, but because each of those ancient hearths led to the master flue. And that flue was the only place in the white cathedral with direct access to the surface, direct access to the sun. Strike them down, the opera shouted at his priest guards. They're trying to kill our saint. They're trying to kill us all. I'd come here every day, hoping the cooks might use more than a few fires so that the flue would open all the way. I'd tried to summon, hidden from the priest guards by Jinya's thick shawl and their superstitious fear of her. I'd tried and failed. Now Mal had blown the flue wide open. I could only call and pray that the light would answer. I felt it, miles above me, so tentative, barely a whisper. Panic gripped me. The distance was too great. I'd been foolish to hope. Then it was as if something within me rose and stretched, like a creature that had lain idle for too long. Its muscles had gone soft from disuse, but it was still there, waiting. I called and the light answered with the strength of the antlers at my throat, the scales at my wrist. It came to me with a rush, triumphant and eager. I grinned at the opera, letting exultation fill me. A man so obsessed with holy fire should pay more attention to the smoke. The light slammed through me and burst over the room in a blinding cascade that illuminated the almost comical expression of shock on the opera's face. The priest guards threw up their hands, eyes squeezed shut against the glare. Relief came with the light, a sense of being right and whole for the first time in months. Some part of me had truly feared I might never be restored completely, that by using resolve in my fight with the Darkling, by daring to create shadow soldiers and trespass in the making at the heart of the world, I had somehow forfeited this gift. But now it was as if I could feel my body coming to life, my cells reviving. Power rippled through my blood, reverberated in my bones. The operat recovered quickly. Save her, he bellowed. Save her from the traitors. 
Some of the guards looked confused, some frightened, but two jumped forward to do his bidding, sabers raised to attack Nadia and Zoya. I honed my power to a gleaming scythe, felt the strength of the cut in my hands. Then Mal lunged in front of me. I barely had time to draw back. The jolts of unused power recoiled through me, making my heart stutter. Mal had gotten hold of his sword, and his blade flashed as he cut through one guard, then the other. They toppled like trees. Two more advanced, but Toya and Tamar were there to stop them. David ran to Jinya's side. Nadia and Zoya flipped another guard in the air. I saw priest guards on the periphery raising their rifles to open fire. Rage coursed through me, and I fought to rein it in. No more, I told myself. No more deaths today. I hurled the cut in a fiery arc. It crashed through a long table and tore into the earth before the priest guards, opening a dark, yawning trench in the kitchen floor. Terror was written on the Oprat's face, terror and what might have well have been awe. The guards fell to their knees, and a moment later the priest followed. Some wept, chanting prayers. Beyond the kitchen doors I heard fists pounding, voices wailing, Sancta, Sancta. I was glad they were crying out for me and not the Oprat. I dropped my hands, letting the light recede. I didn't want to let it go. I looked at the bodies of the fallen guards. One of them had sawdust in his beard. I had almost been the person to end his life. I drew a little light and kept it burning in a warm halo around me. I had to be cautious. The power was feeding me, but I'd been too long without it. My weakened body was having trouble keeping up, and I wasn't sure of my limits. Still, I'd been under the apparatus control for months, and I wouldn't have an opportunity like this again. Men lay dead and bleeding, and a crowd was waiting outside the kettle doors. I could hear Nikolai's voice in my head. The people like spectacle. The show wasn't over yet. I walked forward, stepping carefully around the trench I'd opened, and stood before one of the kneeling guards. He was younger than the others, his beard just coming in, his gaze fastened on the ground as he mumbled prayers. I caught not just my name, but the names of real saints, strung together as if in a single word. I touched my hand to his shoulder, and his eyes slid shut, tears rolling down his cheeks. Forgive me, he said, forgive me. Look at me, I said gently. He forced himself to look up. I cupped his face in my hand, gentle, like a mother, though he was barely older than I was. What's your name? Vladim. Vladim Oswald. It's good to doubt saints, Vladim. And men. He gave a shaky nod as another tear spilled over. My soldiers bear my mark, I said, referring to the tattoos borne by the soldat soul. Until this day you have put yourself apart from them, buried yourself in books and prayer instead of hearing the people. Will you wear my mark now? Yes, he said fervently. Will you swear loyalty to me and only me? Gladly, he cried. Soul Coraliva. Sun Queen. My stomach turned. Part of me hated what I was about to do. Can't I just make him sign something? Give a blood oath? Make me a really firm promise? But I had to be stronger than that. This boy and his comrades had taken up arms against me. I couldn't let that happen again, and this was the language of saints and suffering, the language they understood. Open your shirt, I commanded. Not a loving mother now, but a different kind of saint, a warrior wielding holy fire. His fingers fumbled with his buttons, but he didn't hesitate. He pulled the fabric apart, burying the skin of his chest. I was tired, still weak. I had to concentrate. I wanted to make a point, not kill him. I felt the light in my hand. I pressed my palm to the smooth skin over his heart and let the power pulse. Vladim flinched when it connected, scorching his flesh, but he did not cry out. His eyes were wide and unblinking, his expression rapt. When I pulled my hand back, my palm print remained, the brand throbbing red and angry on his chest. Not bad, I thought grimly, for your first time mutilating a man. I let the power go, grateful to be finished. It is done. Vladim looked down at his chest, and his face broke into a beatific grin. He has dimples, I realized with a lurch. Dimples and a hideous scar he'll bear for the rest of his life. Thank you, Sol Coraliva. Rise, I commanded. He stood, beaming down at me, tears still running from his eyes. The uproar moved as if to stand. Stay where you are, I snapped, my rage returning. He was the reason I just had to brand a young man. He was the reason two men lay dead, their blood pooling over discarded onion skins and carrot shavings. I looked down at him. I could feel the temptation to take his life, to be rid of him forever. It would be deeply stupid. I'd awed a few soldiers, but if I murdered the uproar, who knew what chaos I might unleash? You want to, though, said a voice in my head. For the months underground, for the fear and intimidation, for everyday sacrifice below the surface when I could have been hunting the firebird and seeking revenge on the darkling. He must have read the intent in my eyes. Sancta Alina, I only wanted for you to be safe, for you to be whole and well again, he said shakily. Then consider your prayers answered. 
That was a lie if I'd ever told one. The last words I would have chosen to describe myself were whole or well. Priest, I said, you will offer sanctuary to all those who seek it, not just those who worship the sun saint. He shook his head. The security of the white cathedral. If not here, then elsewhere. Figure it out. He took a breath. Of course. And there will be no more child soldiers. If the faithful wish to fight. You are on your knees, I said. We are not negotiating. His lips thinned, but after a moment he dipped his chin in assent. I looked around. You are all witness to these decrees. Then I turned to one of the guards. Give me your gun. He handed it over without a second's pause. With some satisfaction, I saw the Operat's eyes widen in dismay, but I simply passed the weapon to Jinya, then demanded a saber for David, though I knew he wouldn't be much good with it. Zoya and Nadia stood ready to summon, and Mal and the twins were already well armed. Up, I said to the Operat. Let us have peace. We have seen miracles this day. He rose, and as I embraced him, I whispered in his ear, You will lend your blessing to our mission, and you will follow the orders I've laid out for you, or I will carve you in half and throw the pieces into the fold. Understood? He swallowed and nodded. I needed time to think, but I didn't have it. We had to open those doors to offer the people an explanation for the fallen guards and for the explosion. See to your dead, I said to one of the priest guards. We'll bear them with us. Do they... Do they a family? We are their family, said Vladim. I addressed the others. Gather the faithful from all over the White Cathedral and bring them to the main cavern. I will speak to them in one hour's time. Vladim, once we're out of the kettle, free the other Grisha and get them to my quarters. He touched the brand at his chest in a kind of salute. Sancta Alina. I glanced at Mal's bruised face. Genya, clean him up. Nadia. I've got it, Tamar said already dabbing the blood on Nadia's lip with a towel she dunked into a cook pot full of hot water. Sorry about that, I heard her say. Nadia smiled. Had to make it look good. Besides, I'll get you back. We'll see, Tamar replied. I looked over the other Grisha and their bedraggled kefta. We didn't make for a very impressive parade. Toya, Tamar, Mal, you'll walk beside me with the operat. I lowered my voice. Try to look more confident and regal. I have a question, Zoya began. I have about a hundred, but they'll have to wait. I don't want the crowd out there turning into a mob. I looked at the operat. I felt the dark urge to humble him, to make him crawl in front of me for those long weeks of subjugation underground. Ugly, foolish thoughts. It might gain me petty satisfaction, but what would it cost? I took a deep breath and said, I want everyone else interspersed with the priest guards. This is a show of alliance. We arranged ourselves in front of the doors. The Aprot and I took the lead, the priest guards and Grisha arrayed behind us, the corpses of the fallen borne aloft by their brothers. Vladim, I said, open the doors. As Vladim moved to turn the locks, Mal took his place beside me. How did you know I'd be able to summon, I asked under my breath. He glanced at me, and a faint grin touched his lips. Faith. 